direction. We're going to be looking at mission, vision and values uh, for leaders. This is so, so important, especially at this time, because we've been through uh, leaders. No matter where you are, you will have been through a lot of change and transition over the last two years. And I just thought it would be really important for us to get a few people together and uh, for us to discuss this whole area of mission, vision, values, because, you know, it's, it's just something that as leaders, whatever context you're in, you're going to need to be thinking about and grappling with on your own, but also in prayer, but also with your team. So I'm really excited to bring a couple of leaders onto the stage. We have um, two church leaders who are going to be joining us, and we have um, we have two leaders, Wale uh, Ag Agbaje is the leader of Imprint Church, and uh, which Imprint Church has plans in both Les Plant, sorry, both in Leicester and in London. He's currently based in Bank in London, Wally is where he and his team lead Imprint Church. Um, he is also, in addition to all of this, he is a music artist and is part of a deep house duo called Heights. Am I saying that right, Wally? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you. Great to see you. Let me welcome up Libby as well. Libby Talbot is, um, has been ordained for 20 years and uh, is working on a number of diverse, has been working on a number of diverse settings. Uh, for the past six years, um, Libby has been one of the senior leaders at P's and G's in Edinburgh, the Evangelical City Centre Church. And her passions in ministry are growing whole life disciples of Jesus, identifying uh, developing, training, and mentoring young leaders and, and, and preaching as well. It's a whole range of things that she's passionate about and, and brings to the table. I'm really excited that both you and Libby are able to join me for this conversation today. Welcome, both of you. How are you doing today? All good. Just had my steak pie and chips, raring to go. <laughs> Great yeah, stuff. So, go on, Wally. I'm good as well, thank you. <laughs> where, so where are you both based? We got one in London and one in, in Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yes, yeah, so I'm in London. Um, it's literally virtual opposites. <laughs> I know, but it is not very Edinburgh weather at the moment. We, uh, we're on about 12 degrees today, so uh, right. not the usual so, January weather up here. It's probably like London, actually. <laughs> yeah, so I think you're actually warmer than us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, look, it's it's so good to have you both here um, and to discuss this whole topic of mission, vision, values. Of course, you know, you could spend days on this. We're just going to be scraping the surface. But I, I just thought really good at this point in time just to get us together to discuss some of these themes. Um, as I said earlier in the intro, you know, just this is this is a really important time and season. And I know leaders will be thinking about this in a big way, in a new way. Um, Chris Kendai spoke earlier on today and he's saying, you know, every organization right now is a startup. Um, so that brings into, you know, that that relates to mission, vision, values. We're going to organizations are going to be reflecting on and reviewing their mission, vision and values. And I thought maybe we could um, learn some things. Definitely we'll be learning some things from you guys. And uh, but first, I wonder whether you could just paint a bit of a picture of your context. Libby, tell us a little bit about what your what your context looks like, looks like. In leadership and also you know what, what you're doing what you're involved in yeah so uh, the church i work at at the moment is uh, a large-ish city center evangelical we like to say we're softly charismatic interpret as you wish uh, a church in the center of edinburgh we have lots of young adults lots of students families youth all that sort of thing uh, very few old people um uh, but we love the old people that we do have um, we have quite a clear vision and strategy that flow from what we do we're a church we don't know how many people come to our church Wally's probably the same um, you know we think we're about a thousand people but who knows because with COVID everything's been thrown up in the air and obviously people engage with us online as well um, so we're a, very, a gathered community people travel from a sort of 50 mile radius to us as well um, we do a sort of different social transformation ministry and very much focused on whole life discipleship. Um, my role within our senior leadership team is there are a few clergy and we have a few ministry staff as well. Uh, and I just help lead the church generally um, with the other clergy and senior staff, but also I oversee anything that could possibly fit under um, whole life discipleship. Uh, so adult discipleship and development and also leadership development as well. We have a real heart for developing younger leaders and uh, releasing them into ministry 
in all sorts of areas. So I oversee that um, and, you know, a huge amount of other things as well. So that's just a sort of taste of, of what we're like. In, in Scotland, we're really unusual. There's a church like ours in every city in England. In Scotland, that's not the case. Um, so we're a bit of an island in some respects um, as well in terms of relating to other uh, similar sort of larger Anglican evangelical churches. Okay, okay, fabulous. That's really helpful, Libby, just to get a bit of a picture of your context and your setup. Uh, Wally, I wonder whether you could just give us a bit of a snippet of your own context and your, your situation as well. Yeah, so um, we actually first planted in Leicester. So we started with six friends. Um, and then our church just um, grew um, over the two years. And we also planted again into Bank. And um, our church is called Imprint. So we have one in Leicester and we have one in London. And um, when we first started, especially, we had a primal focus of really trying to reach the young professionals in the area. So we have um, um, evidently just been in bank. We have a lot of people who work in the corporate industry and stuff who are part of our church, as well as a lot of different students, um, which is great. But I actually, I'm currently in my curacy year. So even though I planted um, into bank, I'm also a joint curate at HTV. And, you know, HTV is a large church, six sites and 5,000 people. Um, across those six sites and um, even more people online and stuff. So it's also great to just have um, that variation in context and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. That's so good just to understand a bit more. And, you know, just reflecting on the last couple of years, what would you say for you as leaders have been some of the, you know, key challenges on the flip side, opportunities of, of the last couple of years? How have you navigated? What are the challenges? What are the opportunities you would say? Libby, do you want to go? Yeah, I mean, I think there has been probably equal challenge and opportunities. I think anybody who's working in any leadership team position um, has found the sort of keeping the team together and uh, bonded and working in the same direction uh, and traveling the same direction has been a challenge, you know, flipping constantly. Um, has been a challenge and reinventing how we do church and our different ministries over the past uh, two years has just been a constant challenge. But I, I mean, I, you know, I, I quite relish change. Uh, sometimes I do like things to be stable. Um, and, and what we've seen is that there's been lots of opportunity for new ministries to grow. We've reached people uh, through our, our online ministries, whether that's Alpha or uh, just online services or um courses that we've run or whatever that we would have never reached you know we've had people becoming christians and our alphas from all over the the country and all over the world as well we have people part of our church in cornwall so it's like we've planted a church you know uh, online which was part of our vision and strategy that everything's moved quicker. And I think probably everybody would relate to that in terms of uh, church ministry business as well. Think everything's speeded up. So things that perhaps you might have wanted to do, um, especially in the digital era has speeded up, but then other things have slowed down. So some things that we plan to do, uh, you know, two years ago were imminent, have had to slow down. So we uh, have a vision for church planting. We've planted a couple of uh, churches or ready and um, we were going to do three and uh, two or three in five years that's all had to slow down because other things uh, took priority we sort of planted a, a, an online congregation uh, by default as well so there's been opportunities and challenges I think on our as a leader as well there are there have been certain things you know in terms of personality um, when you're on a leadership team working with others with different personalities and it sort of brought out the best and the worst in us all hasn't it uh, and then you have those sort of where you miss each other if you're not seeing each other on a regular basis as well so challenges there I think one of the things that that I've been really struck by and we as a leadership team at our church have been really struck by is how uh, when we stripped all back we found that our mission our values were the same but our method 
has changed or is has had to shift along the way. Um, so I think that's been one of our, our big learnings is that actually when you look at who we are as a church and the value, the vision, our vision statement and how we do stuff, actually that mission is still the same, but we've just had to shift method. And we think that's the same, that'll be the same moving forward as well. We're just constantly seeing uh, how we can adjust the method, but keep the mission the same. Fascinating, Libby, that's great. Wale, how, how about in your setup? Yeah, um, for us, obviously, um, the pandemic was really hard, as with many people, um, but we kind of took it as an opportunity. So in our church, we had a lot of prophetic words about discipling people digitally, um, and we're in a place where we had no choice to kind of step into those words and to take steps of faith. Um, so something that we did, especially just, we kind of had this sense that you know, in the pandemic, it's so easy for people to stray away from God. Um, so we had a big emphasis in terms of, um, you know, for people to, we had a big emphasis on people learning God's voice and learning how to hear God's voice. So we actually um, did an online prophetic school, um, which, you know, at first it was just meant for people in our community, um, but we actually had people from all over the world um, who joined and who tuned in um, to our online prophetic school. And I think it was five weeks and we had so many testimonies from that. And that was one of the first things we did in the pandemic. And we just saw how it really strengthened our community uh, throughout um, lockdown. And um, secondly, um, we also, you know, in our, in our context, we have a really big emphasis on creative outreach. We have a lot of creators, um, um, musicians, digital designers, and, you know, just all sorts. So we felt like, you know, there's a lot of people who are at home um, <laughs> not doing much. So let's create some short films that can talk about our faith. So we, we did two short films in lockdown one was literally called lockdown i wonder why <laughs> and, um, and i was just talking about you know some of like the tensions um in a household in lockdown and how you can trust the lord um in all of that and how the lord can actually heal relational dynamics and it was quite personal um and as well um the other one was called motions um which talked about some of the in injustices that we saw in you know during during the pandemic and stuff and how the lord also um strengthened people in that aspect and you know this was a missional tool that we used and you know a lot of people and um, watched it a lot of people shared it and as a result we had people who literally signed up for prayer ministry online and we could you know um, pray for people that in those particular aspects and and yeah just disciple people in that way so yeah, that's the sniff of what we did Really, uh, yeah, that sounds amazing. Really, um, I think we'll be telling these stories, won't we, for for years to come? There's things that we won't don't yet know what God has been doing, and these stories are just we need to share them. It's so encouraging, just so amazing, just to hear that. Um, people, as you're watching, feel free to use the chat. We're going to be spending the next 30, uh, 25 minutes with uh, with Wally and Libby, and um, while while we're here together, feel free to ask questions, post comments. As we uh, as we spend some time together. Now I, I'm I'm aware that there are some people during um, during the last couple of years who've just had a, a growing, um, you know, a, a growing passion, desire to lean into a project or a vision or a dream, maybe even a business in some cases. Uh, uh, and the last couple of years has given them a, an opportunity to really lean into that and to and to go for it. Um, there'll be some of those people that are in that. Maybe others that are watching. Um, that have already been doing that before the before the pandemic. But speaking, sort of thinking about the the broad range of people that we've got that are listening, I'm just thinking about mission, mission, vision, and values. You know, why do they play such an important part in 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 the role of of leadership? Libby, you referenced this. Um, you know, in terms of your your own church and the method change, but vision and mission, you know, remain the same. But why why do we need them in the first place? why are they so mm. important why do we talk a lot about this mm. uh, you, that whole area it, it, I, I think there's it's sort of too stranded as well because you know as a church leader but maybe i'm not, i don't run a business i'm i don't think i'm an entrepreneur i don't know um but i, I expect that we all need our own personal vision 
and mission that God gives us. And, and that's to do with who we are as people, uh, the gifts that God has given us, maybe our family priorities, maybe our experience. That all comes to our sort of personal vision statement, if you if you, if you you like. And, it, it, and it, that's transient, isn't it? Because God can start new things in us. And, but we might have our own personal vision um, and that will affect uh, the, the choices that we make how we lead, because we sort of filter things through that. Um, because we're not going to, um, I don't know, do something completely that we're ungifted for. So I am not going to go to, to my church, hey, I'm going to make a film called Emotions, because they'll go, Libby, you'll be rubbish at it, because it's not your gifting. Uh, so, you know, so when we're thinking about our vision and, and mission, it's going to be sort of in line with who we are and our gifts and our personalities and all that sort of thing. There's the personal vision, but then there's there's maybe the organisational vision and mission um, that, that we as leaders or business leaders or entrepreneurs sort of sit under as well. Um, and so I sit under, if you like, the vision uh, statement of my church um, that sort of, and the values that flow through that that then affect the things that we do and don't do. Um, the thing it affects how we are as leaders. So, uh, for example, my my church's uh, vision, uh, and it's been this for about I don't know about seven or eight years now, is we're called to be whole life disciples, sharing the whole of the gospel with the whole of society through churches of grace. Okay, that's that's who we are. So therefore. Everything that we do sits under that vision that God's given us. And obviously, Jesus and the gospel are, 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 are above that even. Uh, but that's our sort of how we feel that God, what, what God has called us to do. And then so therefore, you know, I have a great idea one day, you know, do X, Y or Z or, or somebody else does in the church. And we go, OK, so does it fit in with that vision? Does it fit under the values as well? We have a whole lot of values that are really important to us um, as a church community as well. And so it acts as a filter. Um, it keeps us focused. It makes sure that we're still doing what we think God has called us to do and to be for that particular time or season. Um, it makes sure, it ensures that as a team, we're all leading in the same direction that we're using the same sort of language as well. I think language is really important. We feel free to dig into that later um, as well. Uh, so we're using the same sort of language. The church as a whole, whether they've joined us online from South India or whether they live down the street here in Edinburgh and have been coming to P's and G's for 20 years, they know what we're about. They've bought into it. Uh, and therefore, you know, they know what it means to be a whole life disciple of Jesus. They know that actually P's and G's is all about ch building churches of grace and transforming society and, um, and sharing the whole of the gospel, not just the bits that we like. Um, as well and so there's that vision sort of influences how we operate who we are and what we do on a daily basis and acts as a filter if you like as well I don't know whether that answered your question no I think it's I think it does absolutely yeah it's great well would you have anything to add to that yeah I think when it comes to mission um just something to add I think it really does protect you from just um doing you know, what everyone else does. I think especially when it comes to church leadership, it's so easy to, you know, compare yourself. Um, and, you know, just because, you know, a great church down the road is doing something, it's like, okay, that automatically means it will translate in our context. And even, um, you know, plot, as, as simple as planting into both um, London and Leicester, there are some things that we learned really quickly couldn't be translated into our London context. And, you know, for example, um, all of our small groups are literally within the city of London. And that's really different from Leicester because Leicester people's small groups are in their houses and stuff. But in the city of London, um, people are not getting home on time because some people are traveling an hour and people have awkward housemates and stuff like that. So we realized that, um, you know, this, this small group DNA that we had in Leicester, that's even in most churches, had to adapt, especially for city professionals. So we have all of our small groups in the city, which immediately increased the attendance of small groups, but it's much more accessible. People could easily bring um, their friends. So we had to see, okay, what's the 
first of all, the mission starts with the people who are the people in our context. And when we're talking about vision, um, I think really simply, it's just that, you know, your, it's your mission statement that you make aware for your whole congregation. And I think lastly, when it comes to um, your values, the importance of that is that it really addresses the character and the work dynamic of your team. Like there's organizations that have great vision um, statements and mission statements, but their values are quite poor and it's actually quite toxic. So I think if we don't clearly have um, great values in place with, with a great mission statement, um, it can actually brew a quite toxic and quite um, um, driven, driven um, culture that actually doesn't honor people or God. <laughs> so yeah, you definitely need um, both. Okay, so this is, this is really helpful. So obviously it, it needs to be, it needs to be, um, you know, leaders, leadership teams need to discern and to work on. This is worth spending a good bit of time just to clarify. And sometimes, certainly in our own, own experience, leading a church the last 11 years, you know, it, it, it takes time to sort of d discern and grow into that vision if it, we were a plant. So, so it took a while, you know, from, from, from zero to, you know, to try and figure out who is God calling us to be in this particular context. So, um, but I, I just wondered, do you have any, um, what's been your experience? Have you found resources or a framework that's helped you to begin to discern, you know, the, the place that God's calling you to? Any books or resources that you found helpful or, or that you go to that, um, you know, as you discern mission, vision, values, this whole topic? i tell you what, it's a really good book. I, uh, I think on, on this topic, it's good to great by what you call his face. Jim Collins, yeah. Jim mm -hmm. Collins, you know, and it's just such an interesting, you know, story of how he brought this into being really as well. Uh, and then I was reading, um, I had a little mini sabbatical last, last summer, very timely. Um, and I was reading a book by a guy called Richard Stern, I think he's called. He was the uh, CEO of World Vision um, International, but he'd also been really senior in like Gillette and various other businesses. And he's written a book called uh, Leading Like It Matters to God. And, and again, you know, he's got some brilliant stuff in there, not just about vision, but just in terms of character of a leader in the secular workplace, not, not, he's not talking to church leaders, um, but there's some just brilliant stuff on there and actually how, you know, you develop the vision, you create the language, you hold on to it, you implement it, you communicate it left, right and centre. Um, I don't know whether it's rocket science. Really, I think there's just some basics getting it right. And I think as Christians, you know, we have the extra added bonus of being able to listen to Jesus <laughs> and see <laughs> what he's saying, what the Holy Spirit is saying to us and how he's leading us as well. And I think, you know, I guess for us, stuff like this, you know, going to, uh, you know, learning communities, conferences, whatever, and just hearing what other people are doing and where, you know, the, the things that other people are listening to or uh, reading or talking about and just nicking all the best ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Libby, you mentioned earlier on about, um, you know, starting with our own personal vision, mm -hmm. the thing that God's calling us to individually. Mm -hmm. Similar question then. Have you got... Uh, um, is sort of a structure or uh, any encouragement for people who may not have that particularly worked out yet, but uh, mm -hmm. thinking actually that's really important to do. What would you say to them? What would you encourage them with? Yeah, I think just having some reflection. I'm not, I'm not like, I don't have like a set personal vision statement. Some people do. I'm just not like that. I think I'm too flexible uh, to have that. Um, but actually just spending some time reflecting and we're in the beginning of January, it's quite a good time to do that, isn't it? On, you know, what are my spiritual gifts? Um, what is my personality and what does that look like in leadership and how does it, how does that work? What are the things that are really good about how I operate in a leader and, and the bits that I know actually I'm rubbish at and I need other people alongside and look at making sure I've got other people who who can sort of question me or fill the gaps or uh, so so having sort of an awareness of my own gifts my own spiritual um, gifts my own personality the character that God has given me um, and then from that just sort of saying okay what's important in terms of where I feel God is calling me to lead this year 
um, uh, or even what's really get, what's going on in my family. Um, that might be really influential at different seasons of life as well. And I've got, you know, a husband and I've got three children. Um, and so, you know, that all has to come into the mix as well. Uh, you know, I have friends, I have family that are also influential and just putting it all into the mix and making it into a diagram or a list or a vision statement or whatever, but just having a sort of time of reflection before God so that you're aware of who you are, what God's called you to do and to be, uh, what your gifts are, where you think God might be calling you and how might God might be calling you to lead, even just for the next year. It doesn't have to be the next 20 years. Um, you know, and I've said yes and no to doing things based on that. You know, actually, I'm not going to go and, I don't know, speak at a conference on being a mum because actually that's not what God's called me to do and be gifted in um, as well so using that again as that filter like you would in a church as well um, don't know whether that yeah was no, that, no that's really good that's really really good and just just shifting back then thinking about mission vision and values Wally maybe you could um, help us think you know there's people use them quite um, especially mission and vision purpose statements they can be used quite interchangeably how do you use them in your context what do, what do they each mean yeah I think for us um I think honestly the mission is to always make disciples and to always you know just share the good news of Jesus Christ I think the vision is much more contextual to much more contextual and it's like okay what does that look like in our particular area um so I remember when I actually first um moved to London I, I was like standing near um London Bridge with one of my best friends um and he was just asking me like you know why do you feel like the Lord has um called you to London and also just like um this church to London um, and I really just had that strong sense of um, the Lord just saying to me that that um, the young adults have become the new pioneers of faith in their households. And it's kind of like different from when I was a child. I remember, you know, um, when I was younger, it was actively our parents that were dragging us to church. Um, but that's really changed um, currently where a lot of the time it's actually the young adults who are the first people mm -hmm. who are being saved in their household. And we realized by us actually saying, okay, we really want to um, be intentional with young professionals. We were able to actually reach households because the young professionals were actually the ones who were actively bringing their younger siblings or their parents or, you know, their aunts and uncles um, to church and stuff. And I think, you know, scripture says, if, if you're faithful this more, the Lord will give you, you know, what will basically add on to you. And I think by us actually being faithful with what the Lord was calling us to do in terms of reaching young professionals, he added to us and he increased our demographic. So, yeah, again, I don't know if that answered your question, but I remember, yeah, in the early days, the Lord gave us a really specific vision and naturally it just progressed. And I think that's the thing with vision. It's not just this, you know, one, <laughs> one deal thing, but it progresses over time and the Lord adds to it. I love that because I think that is so important, isn't it? That sort of, mm. you know, what, what has God called you to be and mm. do in this moment? And I think yeah. we can get so distracted and go, you know, I've got this business. I could do these 10 things, but actually mm. maybe God's called us to just do one thing brilliantly mm. and really well for this season yeah. um and I think you know there are so many things you know we we see our world it's so broken there's so much we can do but it might be you do what you're doing uh with those young professionals amazingly and better than any other church yeah. in London and then the church next door does the other thing really well yeah. as well yeah. so I think that's yeah. something brilliant there Libby, how do you use these terms in, in your context, in your setup? Really similar. Um, sorry, I'm not going to say anything particularly <laughs> different. Uh, yeah, our mission is to make whole life disciples of Jesus and to grow churches. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's what, 
that's what we're and to share the gospel of Jesus and to live it out uh, so it is the gospel our vision is what I've already stated um, and then our values just sort of flow from that and enable it to happen um, so you know we have we have like um, a set of um, values you can look at them on our church website if you're really really interested uh, but that's sort of it's the how do we actually do this in practice what does it mean you know it means that we worship God that's one of our <laughs> values and that we're Christ-centered in the way that we do that and we believe in the power of prayer and we want to take risks uh, and that flows through to things like how we lead and train leaders because we want to be Christ-centered we want to be founded on prayer and we want people to take risks and if we're going to be a risk-taking church we've got to be prepared for failure as well and we're quite you know we're full of like professional people so that's quite tricky uh, for some, for us and for some people as well so being a, a sort of radical and creative risk-taking church is one of our values um, you know an integrity in living and in character and an open, openness and honesty is is one of our values and that's really important to us so you see that you walk into our church and it, it's one of those things like the way we preach uh, you know it's christ-centered but it's also open and honest and it's got integrity within it that's really important um and that we give the people the opportunity to discover and that we serve uh, the world because that's what god's called us to do as a church that's called to make church the grace and transform society is to serve the world so the values sort of underpin the vision and the vision flows from the mission uh, which is to make whole life disciples of Jesus, because that's what Jesus told us to do as the church. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Absolutely, amen. Um, uh, love to, um, to to just sort of think think for then. You know, you, you mentioned about having the values on your website. Um, how much of this exercise, and you know, about mission, vision, values. There's a there's a piece of work as a leadership team to discern that and to clarify that and work on it. Obviously, then the, the then comes the communication piece. Um, you know, vision leaks, doesn't it? We, we need to keep communicating it. But how do you how do you embed the direction of the church that you believe God's taking you into? How do you you know year after year? Or, you know, what what have you found that works to help embed this across your culture and across your organisation? Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think when it comes to this you have to be like really creative. Um, so like if we, so our slogan basically um, at Imprint is, um, you know, is to make a space where God first marks us. And then because God has marked us, you know, he's, he sets us free from our sin, our shame, um, our default sign securities. And, you know, we then go out to mark the world and um, hence leaving that imprint in the world. And, you know, like I said before, sometimes there's there's a vision for a particular moment. And there was a time a few years ago where we were just hearing a lot of family breakdown. And as a result, we really felt like we needed to increase um, people's faith that actually they can be the people who can bring, and um, by the help of God, healing and transformation into their households. So we basically um, had a series and had like a whole production called Game Changer. And um, so we just started, you know, started calling people Game Changers. And we, we printed out wristbands called Game Changers. And <laughs> I think we even made a song called Game Changer. <laughs> and, stuff. and we're really creative. And it was like maybe a four week stretch vision, you know, campaign. But our community really got it. And we started hearing those stories of, um, you know, transformation. And I remember people's parents even um, coming up to me saying, you know, what this church has done for our family and stuff, like, was so, so grateful. So, yeah, I think, there's, like, there's so many things you could do. <laughs> Print up wristbands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, and the principle is, is that actually finding ways to communicate the same thing yeah. but just in different ways that land with people that resonate um and you you know and it does take a some you know a degree of creativity so mm. it sounds like you've involved other people in that process not just down to you as church leader you've involved a number of people yeah. in that process and in this and by doing that even you you enculturate some of that vision you know you get people adopting and championing and it spreads yeah. further so yeah definitely like 
I've always felt like, you know, one person doesn't have a monopoly on revelation. And when it comes to vision, when it comes to just church in general, it is a collaboration of discernment and revelation because the Lord speaks to his body. He doesn't just only speak to one individual. Um, so yeah, we try to ask a lot in our church, you know, what has the Lord been saying to you and stuff? Mm -hmm. And our church knows that and we test it, um, but we also make it a part of, you know, corporately what we put out there as our vision or even our vision statement for the moment. Um, so yeah. Mm. How about you, Libby? Yeah, I mean, just in terms of the sort of discernment side of things, we we don't just do it as a, a staff or a senior leadership team. We incorporate other people into that process as well. And it can take some time and we communicate with the church along the way we have, you know, so even our, our vision statement, for example, has stayed the same for about eight or nine years, as I said, but we've had two different strategies under that vision statement, um, which is now this this is the vision that God has given us, but what does that actually mean in terms of what God is calling us to do at this moment uh, or for the next, it's usually for the next five years. And at that point, we really involve the church. So we'll have evenings of prayer and worship and listening to God. And if you've got a sense of, you know, we'll have flip charts up and stuff and people will email in, you know, and that'll go on for like two or three months. So actually involving people, as Wally was saying, right in the process of listening and discernment is really important um, and then you know putting together really clear comms on it um, as well so whether that's digital or printed or whatever and just having it everywhere a lot forever you know not for the first two Sundays that you're gonna like launch your strategy but like on your website all the time uh, you know going back to it um, having the leaflets if you do leaflets you know, regularly around at church, uh, we have like two vision Sundays a year where we just go back to, to it. Um, we have a, this thing called core leaders where we gather all our core leaders in our church together twice a year. And we, you know, we'll focus in on our vision and strategy and where we're at and what God is calling us to do. Um, so making sure our leaders um, are onboarded with it and know what's going on. A language I mentioned earlier, so important that we use the same language all the time. So, you know, our church, they just, you know, they absolutely know what whole life discipleship is because we talk about it and unpack it and all the time in all sorts of different ways. You know, we pray into it. It's, our, it's part of our language, you know, transforming society, being a church of grace. People know what that means um, as well. Uh, and so sort of using that, that language and then uh, repetition, just going on about it all the time. Just, you know, not thinking, hey, we've had our vision Sunday or whatever it is. We've done that. Um, you know, it just comes out and flows out all the time. Um, it's own, it needs to be owned by more than the senior leadership team, basically. It needs to be, be owned and understood um, by everybody, but particularly all our core leaders um, across the church. And then it actually has to be implemented. I think there's something about, you know, we can have the greatest idea or vision or strap line, but actually if, if it's not implemented, implemented and people in the church and beyond the church go oh you know they say that they're this but we don't know what it actually means because we never see it in practice um you know what does it actually look like uh to share the whole of the gospel um and actually but actually if they are involved in actually bringing it to life um, so if we banged on about, you know, hey, we feel called the peace and Jesus to be a church that transforms society and then people looked and said, yeah, but you don't do anything apart from like gather together and sing songs to Jesus. You know, they actually need to go, ah, oh, they do this thing with, uh, you know, people on the margins of society on a Saturday night and it's called Saturday meal and you, you, I can get involved in that, I can serve, you know. Um, so actually giving people the opportunity to not just know it, but be involved in it and deliver it as well um so again you know going back to Wally's illustration of being a game changer they had that great bit of language and the strap line and the sort of marketing that went with it but then actually gave people the tools to actually go and live it in their every day um so again that's really important for us when we're talking about whole life discipleship because actually you know if we say go and be whole life disciples but we're not going to give people the language and the tools to do that so even the courses that we run or the stuff we do in our connect groups is to equip people to be whole life disciples 
It's not about coming into the church. It's about what we do out there. Um, and so everything we do goes through that. So, yeah, uh, language, repetition, own it and implement it. Mm. So good. This is fabulous. Absolute gold. Um, there's so much more that we could go into. And already the time time has run out. We do have one question that's come in. Um, Wally, where do you get your creative ideas for your music and videos? This is from Ashley. Uh, where what do you how do you do that where do you get it from uh ooh. honestly um and i hope this is not a cop out um i'm a dreamer so <laughs> some, some of them i <laughs> just get it in my dreams um but yeah walk in i also speak to a lot of people and i and i just i ask you know our team or my friends you know this is this is what I feel like the Lord is saying to me. Um, what's a creative way that I can, you know, manifest this and stuff. And yeah, I, yeah. And they will normally give me some suggestions and stuff like that. So, but yeah, start off with praying and hopefully the Holy Spirit might give you a dream or a vision. <laughs> yeah. It's good, good stuff. Guys, we, are co we come to the end. Um, if people want to connect with you, where can they find you uh, on social uh, where can where can you tell them where to where to find find you i'm on twitter facebook and instagram or you can just use jolly old email and email me via p's and d's <laughs> thanks Libby. how about you wally um, um mostly instagram so just wally Egbaje, and um imprint is just imprint london ldn so yeah it's been a real treat to spend some time with you. Libby up in Edinburgh, thank you so much. Wale down in London, thank you so much for joining me tonight and for dis discussing mission, vision and values. It's been wonderful. Uh, God bless you the rest of your evening and, uh, and thank you. Thank you, bye. See you, See you bye. soon.